What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt Deville with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Dillian, the body snatcher White. Dillian White has an ongoing legal situation with the WBC as he's pursuing the heavyweight mandatory spot. Eddie Hearn confirmed to me today, he said, I think Dillian's pushing for answers and some justice. You can't say Dillian's not now, not mandatory. It's a load of rubbish. Wow. Okay. Um, you know, that was via Michael Benson. Okay. And Dillian White, <clears throat> I must say, he gets the shitty end of the stick. I think he's too good for his own good a lot of times because he bears a threat to the heavyweight division as far as the narrative and way the way the money situation goes. Yes, is he valuable? Yes, is he credible? Yes, he's all those things. He's marketable also. He has a good gift of gab. He can fight. <clears throat> He's had his wear and tear, and anybody that's been in there with him, including the people that he lost to, knew that they were in a fight. You got to give credit to Dillian White all the way through. He was the number one ranked WBC, not even mandatory, but ranked interim champion for the longest. Okay, and because of that, people, let me counterpunch. That's why I'm explaining to you all why Dillian White is too good for his own good. Okay, um... The WBC with Mauricio Suleiman, and I'll get to him in a second, they got accustomed to Dillian White just being number one, just being the interim champion to the point where I think they want to cement or should I say grandfather him in that and cement him in that position of only being that. I think they only look at Dillian White as being an interim champion, not the world champion, not, and they don't want to put him in a situation where he could ever be because they're so accustomed to him being who he is, okay? Let me explain. <clears throat> See, if you're an interim champion, okay, you are a champion. You're just an interim one. You're not the super champion. You're the interim champion. That means... Uh, basically, what does that mean to a sanctioning body? You still have to pay, okay? You're still paying those sanctioning fees. You're still paying for the opportunity to go elsewhere, but you're paying for your status as is, okay? And Dillian White has been paying his sanctioning fees, being an interim champion for the longest. And Mauricio Suleiman, if anybody knows about him, he is a guy that is an opportunist when it comes to making more money, okay? When Tyson Fury came aboard, they he figured, Mauricio, <clears throat> Tyson Fury's more marketable than Dillian White. Why? Because he's undefeated and he's a former unified champion, okay? And on top of that, he can promote himself. He's a gift of gab. You name it, <clears throat> Fury's claimed it, okay? And... Mauricio knew the opportunity that presented itself with Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder's the American champ on this side of the Americas. That's why, and also he was undefeated. That's why he was more credible than someone like Dillian White that was beat about six years ago <clears throat> from the time he was beat by Alexander Povetkin, by Anthony Joshua. And, and at the time, Anthony Joshua wasn't a champion. So it wasn't like Dillian White had that opportunity to, to get that status from Anthony Joshua because Anthony Joshua didn't have it. And since he didn't have it, Mauricio looks at Dillian White as not really a credible commodity, okay? That Floyd Mayweather you once lost, you once will always lose type of mindset and you can never be that guy because you won't have that O to be that guy is not just for the fighters. It's crept into the minds of um, sanctioning bodies such as Mauricio Suleiman because <clears throat> they see the value on how people look at people's records. Okay, And Dillian White has fought every tough opponent. He did all these other guys' dirty work, including Tyson Fury, including uh, Deontay Wilder as well. He's fought these guys that those guys didn't want to fight. 
The only person he didn't fight was Luis Ortiz, which he should have fought. Okay? But nonetheless, again, with Mauricio Suleiman, he didn't care for to put any energy or, or any uh, authority behind Dillian White really getting his opportunity because Dillian White was already paying for something that he was comfortable with paying. He was receiving from Dillian White, okay? So <clears throat> with Dillian White now having a legal situation with the WBC, I say bout fucking time. That's my counterpunch. Bout fucking time Dillian White has done this. I would have done it when I fought Oscar Rivas, had a tough fight with an undefeated Colombian slash Canadian based fighter and got dropped in the ninth round with an uppercut. And that could have been a Povetkin punch, but it wasn't. Smaller guy, however, very tough, very durable, right? <clears throat> and then you took it from me because of a B sample that had nothing to do with your sample. Counterpunch. So that told you, and that should have told Dillian White that that's what they were planning to do from the get-go. Look for any opportunity they possibly could figure up to take it away from Dillian White. Okay, they were looking for a reason. There was no reason to say, oh, what's going on over across the seas? Hey, you failed something, so we're going to suspend you based off something we don't fucking know of, based off a leak from a fucking reporter. Okay. That's when I would have, meaning I, Dillian White, should have pulled the strings he's doing now. He's two years too late. Okay? But that fight happened back in 2019. They snatched the opportunity for him and then supposedly gave it to Tyson Fury, a guy that they wanted to, they made mandatory to fight Dillian, Deontay Wilder again and he didn't take it. So they should have dropped him from the rankings. But they couldn't because they were worried about the money. See, they were making their own rules. Now, had they been enforcing their own rules, this would have been a situation where Tyson Fury shouldn't have had any type of way to, to even to get the belt. Fair enough. He was fighting Deontay Wilder. If he would have beat Deontay Wilder based off the actions that Tyson Fury did in 2019, he shouldn't have been allowed to even keep that belt. Counterpunch. If that was the case, if he would have beat Deontay Wilder, he wouldn't have received the belt. It would have went to whoever. Maybe it would have went to Dillian White because Dillian White was the interim champion or you had to fight Dillian White but not fighting Wilder because you disqualified yourself by not obeying the WBC's rules at the time by fighting Deontay Wilder or he didn't even want to fight Oscar Rivas. Dillian White did, though, again, doing the body, the dirty work of the WBC, fighting all these tough guys. And now you want to sue. You should have done that two years ago. Hey, I guess better late than never. But see, at the same time, he's having this to deal with Mauricio Suleiman, you know, and and it's sad because, <clears throat> like I've always told you guys, he's an opportunities and he's looking for any quick way to make a buck. OK. But believe me, Mauricio is not worried about any of this stuff. If he's going to give an opportunity to Dillian White, he won't do like he did before and pay out a bunch of money to a fighter that they messed over. They will find a way to compromise with Dillian the body snatcher White. OK, they just hope and pray that what happened last year happens to him again so they don't have to give Dillian White the uh, the position that he deserves. But anyway, that's my counterpunch on Dillian White taking legal action against the WBC. You guys tell me what you think. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys can counterpunch. Peace.